What's going on, guys? It's Greg here, aka NY Prepper. It is Monday, March 25th, 2024, and I have some breaking news to share with you guys. Right now, it is 22:39 Eastern Time here in the United States, and we have some major breaking news coming in from Russia, Ukraine, Europe, and the Middle East. Before I get into the situation in Russia and Ukraine, I want to talk about the Middle East. So this evening, there were some surprise airstrikes by the U.S. and allied forces on the Iranian Revolutionary Guard Corps in eastern Syria in the province of Deir Azor. That's an IRGC stronghold, and the IRGC is actually part of the Iranian military. Okay, so the U.S. launched surprise airstrikes this evening on the IRGC in eastern Syria. We also have some breaking news coming from ISIS. ISIS has threatened new attacks in Russia, and they're threatening to target Putin personally, according to Iranian media. According to a statement that was released by ISIS on Telegram, they said there will be revenge for the torture of members of the organization. And what ISIS is referring to is the torture of the four terrorists that were captured by Russian police and security services over the weekend. And they were tortured and beaten. One of them was wheeled into court on a stretcher and was either unconscious or in a coma. And the others had lumps on their face and bruises. So they were obviously beaten and tortured. There was even a video that surfaced showing the Russian police hooking up a battery pack to the testicles of one of these terrorists and electrocuting them. So ISIS is now threatening new attacks on Russia and to target Putin personally. Before I get further into the news, I want to just show you what's going on in the skies tonight. So we currently have a US B-52 nuclear bomber flying over the Adirondack Mountains of upstate New York. This is extremely unusual. This is actually the first time I've ever seen a B-52 looping over the Adirondack Mountains, guys. This is an extremely desolate area. I've been to this area probably many dozen times uh, off-roading and hunting and fishing when I was uh college kid. So I'm very familiar with the terrain here. And there are no major military bases in New York except Fort Drum. And Fort Drum is where the 10th Mountain Division is. And there's some uh, mechanized divisions there. So for there to be a B-52 over here is pretty unusual. So definitely our nuclear forces are on high alert if there's a b-52 looping over the adirondacks and it's been up there for hours you can see how many loops it's done over here over the northern adirondacks so so anybody out there from upstate new york let me know if you see this thing and we also have forte 11 just completing a reconnaissance loop over the black sea and you can see it was patrolling just south of Crimea, keeping an eye on Crimea. So we could possibly see more Ukrainian strikes on Crimea tonight or tomorrow because this thing was looping over here all day. And anytime one of these RQ-4 Global Hawks is looping over here in the Black Sea, it's doing one of two things. It's either keeping an eye on the Russian Black Sea Fleet to see if they're going to be launching missiles at Ukraine. And the Russian Black Sea Fleet is in Sevastopol in Crimea. They also have a base in Novorossiysk. Or they're gathering targeting information for the Ukrainians so the Ukrainians can strike various targets in Crimea, like the Crimean Bridge, or over the weekend they hit the communications and information center of the Black Sea Fleet in Crimea. So we might see a strike on Crimea by Ukraine soon. And we also have this RC-135 
reconnaissance plane on the tarmac in Mildenhall in Britain, and it's probably going to head into Poland and the Baltics to keep an eye on these troops that are massing on the border of Lithuania and Poland in Belarus. I reported last week that Belarus moved an entire mechanized brigade to within just 10 miles of the Lithuanian border, and this mechanized brigade was brought to a wartime status, and Belarus drafted as many as 5,000 men to join this brigade. To bring it up to a wartime status, the entire country of Belarus is doing military drills. They're on a combat alert status right now. The military is on combat alert, and they're doing combat readiness drills. And this one brigade that was moved to within just 10 miles of Lithuania has hundreds of tanks and armored fighting vehicles, okay, BMPs, BTRs, T-72s. And they're literally just a few miles from the border of Lithuania. So I'm very concerned that Belarus is going to attack Lithuania, possibly Poland, at the same time as Russia launches a massive new offensive in eastern Ukraine. And that could happen this spring and this summer. And here we have some video footage coming out of eastern Syria showing these airstrikes on the IRGC. No word yet on any casualties or damage from these strikes, but they look pretty serious. This update was sponsored by My Patriot Supply. Guys, My Patriot Supply has brought back their 25% discount on their three month emergency food supply. And to get the discount, you got to use the link preparewithnyprepper.com. And the link is in the description below this video. But this three month emergency food supply has a 25 year shelf life, it includes over 2,000 calories per day. Breakfasts, lunches, dinners, drinks, and snacks all contained within six rugged water-resistant buckets, and free shipping is included. So use the link preparewithnyprepper.com to get $200 off or 25% off of the My Patriot Supply three-month emergency food supply. The link is in the description below this video. Free shipping is included. They also have a general store where they sell all kinds of prepping and survival products and they're always running various discounts. And to get to their general store, you just gotta click on the My Patriot Supply logo when you get to preparewithnyprepper.com at the top of the page and you'll see their general store where they sell all kinds of prepping and survival products and they're always running discounts here. So use the link preparewithnyprepper.com to get 25% off of the My Patriot Supply three-month emergency food supply, and the link is in the description below this video. And here we have some flights from earlier today. We had two nuclear war command and control planes in the air. We also had a nuke sniffer plane in the air over the Midwest, and then we also had a B-52 over North Dakota, so our nuclear forces are still on high alert and i reported last night if you didn't catch my update of these strange shortwave radio signals that have been broadcasted by the russian military on different frequencies than they normally broadcast them on so this could be a sign that the russian nuclear forces have been put to a higher level of alert and here's the post by isis on telegram saying that they're going to step up attacks on Russia. And someone actually translated it. Let me read to you what the translation says. It says, Beware, do not think that we do not have the ability to take revenge on the captured brothers from you in the attack on Friday, torturing the captives of the Mujahideen from the side of you and posting videos of them will make thousands of their brothers in the Kuntan suffer more i'm not sure what that means kuntan this time let's inflict such a blow on the head that the future generations will remember it wow 
very strong words here from ISIS towards Russia. So we could see even more attacks very soon in Russia, guys. Even worse attacks than the concert hall attack, okay? So I'm going to be covering all of this live if anything happens. Okay, I was live Friday basically all day for 10 and a half hours. I was streaming, covering that whole situation. And when things pop off around the world, I always go live. So if anything happens with Russia and Ukraine, as far as you know, Russia using weapons of mass destruction on Ukraine, or if Russia starts a new offensive, I always go live and I will go live. And here we have some video footage coming out of Russia. Russia is apparently moving massive amounts of tanks towards Ukraine. Looks like they're getting ready for a new massive offensive. Sergei Shoigu, the defense minister of Russia, said last week that they're going to create two new ground armies this year in Russia with 16 brigades and 14 divisions, which could amount to over half a million troops. Take a guess what they're going to do with that. Okay, they're obviously going to use those troops to go into Ukraine and then also to mass on the borders with NATO. They're going to put a lot of those troops on the borders with Estonia, Latvia, Lithuania, Finland. But here's this video showing a bunch of T-72s moving on the highway towards the Ukrainian border. Oh, nice. So at least a few right there just in this short clip. And Putin had a meeting today with various leaders of the Russian government and law enforcement in Russia to discuss the terror attack that occurred. And in the meeting, he admitted that the attackers were radical Islamists, but he still linked them to Ukraine. Here's a clip of him talking about that. Using various channels, the USA is trying to convince its satellites and other countries that according to their intelligence, there's no Kyiv traces in the Moscow terror attack. That the bloody attack was carried out by Islam followers. Members of ISIS, an organization banned in Russia. We know by whose hands this crime against Russia and its people was committed. We want to know who ordered it. Wow, guys. So he's basically already accusing Ukraine of ordering this attack, basically saying that Ukraine was behind it, potentially NATO and Western intelligence was behind it. And he already said over the weekend that he had intelligence that the Ukrainians prepared an escape route into Ukraine for the terrorists. So very, very concerning, guys. He's basically blaming Ukraine for this. And I think some point in the near future, he's going to come out and basically say, we have information that Ukraine was responsible and we're going to have to punish Ukraine now. And he may use weapons of mass destruction. He may launch bunker busters at Zelensky to try to take out Zelensky. He may use chemical weapons. He may use tactical nuclear weapons, but he's going to do something crazy very soon, I believe. And let me just read to you some other things that he said today in this meeting. The March 22nd attack may be a link in a series of attempts by those who have been at war with Russia since 2014 by the hands of the Kiev regime. So he's blaming the Kiev regime there again. We know that the terrorist attack was carried out by the hands of radical Islamists. We're interested in who ordered it. We need to answer the question. 
why the terrorists, after committing the crime, tried to leave exactly to Ukraine and who was waiting for them there. So you see what's going on here, guys? I told you it would eventually come to the point where Putin is going to blame Ukraine or Ukraine is responsible, okay? He just needs an excuse to escalate, all right? And it was revealed today that the security officers responsible for patrolling that concert hall and maintaining the security there and the surrounding shopping mall were located in a building just a few dozen meters away at the time of the shooting and that they were armed and had pistols and Kalashnikov rifles, but they never left their office to confront the terrorists. Hmm. Pretty interesting. Almost like they knew that it was going to happen and they were told to stand down or maybe they are just gutless cowards and they were afraid to confront them. And Maria Zakharova, the Russian foreign ministry spokeswoman, said today that ISIS generally attacks enemies of the U.S. This is a strange coincidence. In Moscow, 700 people were evacuated from the hospital where the victims of the terrorist attacks were being treated, according to various Russian telegram channels close to Russian law enforcement. They reported that the Pirogov National Medical and Surgical Center was informed of a bomb threat. All hospital staff and patients were removed from the building. Information about the bomb is being verified. We also have some breaking news coming from the U.S. Embassy in France. Apparently, they've issued a new security alert for American citizens in France as a result of this concert hall attack on Friday in Russia. So they're expecting more terrorist attacks potentially in Europe and in France. And the Russian ambassador in Poland ignored a summons by Poland over the missile incursion into Polish airspace over the weekend during a Russian missile strike. And Poland has announced that they're going to be modernizing their border wall with Belarus to stop illegal migration. Poland is going to build 70 meter tall observation towers. They're going to reinforce their border wall buy more drones, lights, and cameras, and they're going to build an asphalt road along the entire border wall. As it stands now, the Polish border wall stretches 187 kilometers and is five and a half meters high. So 70 meter high observation towers, guys. That's insane. That's like a fire tower, okay? That's above the treetops, okay? My suspicion is they're going to be building these observation towers not to keep an eye on the illegal immigrants coming in, but to keep an eye on the Belarusian military and the Russian military in Belarus, okay? Because a tower that high, you're not going to even be able to see down into the forest because the Polish border with Belarus is all forested. You're not going to be able to see through the treetops. So I think they're doing that so they can keep an eye on the Russian and Belarusian military just on the other side, especially if there's any plans for an invasion of Poland, they would be able to potentially see helicopters coming or something. And Russia launched a small hypersonic missile attack on the capital of Ukraine last night using Zircon hypersonic missiles launched from the Black Sea where they allegedly targeted a Ukrainian intelligence facility in Kiev, and apparently they also destroyed two Patriot air defense systems in this strike at the Zuliani airport in Kiev. This is being reported by TASS, the Russian government-funded news agency, so we don't know if this is true or not. It could be BS. And the UN Security Council passed a mandatory ceasefire in Gaza for the month of Ramadan as a result of the U.S. not vetoing it. And as a result, Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu got mad and canceled an Israeli delegation that was supposed to visit the White House to discuss the Gaza operation. And this came just a day after Kamala Harris told ABC News yesterday that going into Rafah would be a mistake and when asked by ABC if the U.S. would retaliate against Israel in some way for going into Rafah, 
She said she was not ruling anything out. Wow. Okay, so the U.S. voted for this Ramadan ceasefire and Kamala Harris saying that they're not going to rule out retaliating against Israel in some way if they go into Rafah. Absolutely crazy, guys. We're throwing Israel under the bus. We're turning our backs on Israel. Not good. And the White House said today it was perplexed by Israel's decision to cancel the visit of a delegation that was to discuss U.S. concerns over a possible offensive in Rafah. We're kind of perplexed by the move, National Security Council spokesman John Kirby told journalists today. We are very disappointed about Netanyahu's decision not to send his advisors for talks at the White House about the Rafah operation. The Pentagon says U.S. Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin is still planning on meeting Israeli Defense Minister Yoav Gallant tomorrow at the Pentagon, even as Prime Minister Netanyahu said he would not send a separate delegation as planned. So very interesting, guys. Israel canceling a delegation. And uh, their defense minister is still going to be meeting with the head of the CIA, the CIA director, and the defense secretary. So something big is about to go down in the Middle East if the Israeli defense minister flew all the way over here to meet in person with Lloyd Austin, our defense secretary, and to also meet with the CIA director. I think Israel is going to go into Rafah. And then after that, they're going to go after Hezbollah. They're going to go into Lebanon. And Yoav Gallant, the Israeli defense secretary, actually said that he was going to talk about Lebanon with Lloyd Austin. Okay, so it's not just about Rafah. Okay, everybody's focusing about Gaza, 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 Rafah, Rafah, Rafah. But really, what's more important to Netanyahu and Yoav Gallant. And the Israeli government is Hezbollah. Hezbollah is a bigger threat than Hamas because Hezbollah is better armed. Okay, so things are really going to escalate in the Middle East very soon. And China warned the Philippines on Monday to behave cautiously and seek dialogue, saying their relations were at a crossroads as new confrontations between their coast guards over maritime claims deepened tensions. It was the second such warning. And here we have that U.S. Embassy warning in France, warning all American citizens to be on high alert. Following the March 22nd terrorist attack in Moscow, the French government elevated its national security alert system to the highest level. As a result, residents and visitors throughout France may see heightened security in public areas, including airports, public transport, places of worship, tourist sites, schools, major sports venues, and large commercial centers. French authorities actively monitor terrorist threats from organized groups and radicalized individuals. Attacks may happen with little or no warning, targeting tourist locations, major sporting and cultural events, and other public areas that attract large numbers of civilians. Visitors to congested and popular tourist areas should be particularly attentive to their surroundings. Okay, so this is what the U.S. Embassy in France is saying. Here we have a picture of the Polish border wall as it stands now. They're going to be reinforcing it. They're going to be adding 70 meter towers. They're going to pave a road here along the uh, border fence. They're going to add cameras and lighting. So uh, Poland is really beefing up their security. And I want to just give you guys a quick climate update. So we're going to see the El Nino that we're in right now transition to a La Nina this summer. The U.S. NOAA gives a 62% chance of a La Nina developing between June and August. Okay, so what does that mean? A La Nina typically favors more Atlantic hurricanes and also colder winters for the Northern Hemisphere. Okay, so the timing is very concerning. We're going to go back into a La Nina after a very strong El Nino. 
and it's going to start right before hurricane season. Okay, so this hurricane season, I think we're going to have a very, very active hurricane season. And also this coming winter, 2024, 2025, we're going to see a lot more polar vortex situations with stratospheric warming where the polar vortex collapses and the cold air rushes down from the North Pole to mid latitudes. So if you live in North America, Europe, and uh, Russia, be prepared for a very cold winter this year. And if you live in the eastern U.S. and if you live along the Gulf Coast and the Atlantic Coast in the U.S., you need to be prepared for an active hurricane season this year. And I'm going to be monitoring the hurricanes and any other weather events related to this La Nina. And here we have some video footage coming out of Khabarovsk, Russia, showing this debris trail. And this is apparently a Russian satellite that crashed to Earth. That's the official story. But what it actually is, we don't know. Thought I would just share that with you. So I'll be back tomorrow with more breaking news. Make sure you're subscribed. Hit the bell icon down below so you get notified when I post these updates. And until then, take care. God bless. And don't forget the three Ps. Prepare, practice, and persevere. Guys, the world is getting crazier by the day. We're on the verge of World War III. The U.S. is drowning in trillions of dollars in debt. Inflation is at an all-time high, and there's no end in sight. So you need to prepare your finances for the future with precious metals. Precious metals are a great way to protect your hard-earned savings and retirement against inflation and the uncertainty of the stock market. Also, precious metals are good to have for the purposes of preparedness to be able to barter with people for essential supplies if the grid goes down. Every prepper should have at least a small amount of silver coins. The company I trust for my precious metals is Midas Gold Group. Text NY Prepper to 232425 for free information on precious metals. Midas Gold Group is 100% veteran owned and supports veterans through the Wounded Warrior Project. Midas Gold Group will work with you to convert part of your retirement savings into gold or to set up a gold IRA. And unlike many precious metals dealers, Midas Gold Group offers precious metals in small denominations, which is great for preparedness so you have something tangible to use for bartering when the grid goes down. Precious metals have continuously risen in price over the past hundred years and are considered a safe investment. So text NY Prepper to 232425 for free information and to get started today.